Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of Starfield Essentials. My name is Richard and in today's video we're going to take a quick look at my O2 Shot farm. The O2 Shot is a chem that you can craft. It's a combination of snake oil, amp, and metabolic agent. And I decided to create this, uh, this farm to just to try this process. I had created an amp farm previously and was using it to gather XP and credits. And I read a post by a Reddit user named uh, Just Wanna Save Things. And it gave me the idea to try creating an O2 shot farm. And I built on some lessons that I had learned from uh, a couple other people on YouTube, uh, namely Kibbles, who did a, an epic 150 uh, level or zero to 150 level uh, grind in three hours and uh, through crafting, through fabrication of, of items, not uh, necessarily through chems. And also uh, Tacticat, and he was the first person whose video was about amp farming that I watched and got inspired to try to do it on my own. Now, uh, I'm doing this on PC because there's some advantages for selling this, uh, this stuff, <laughs> namely that Richer Merchants mod that I, I talked about in uh, my recent uh, video on my, my favorite mods uh, for Starfield. But uh, I've started a run on on Xbox, and that is taking a brand new character, no level, uh, preferably up to level 12, which is what I think you will need in order to uh, have the skills necessary to duplicate what you see here. Uh, this character, when I started working on the amp farm, um, was a little bit lower, and then once I did the O2 shot farm, uh, I think I started at level 19. And just by playing around trying to optimize the O2 shot farm, this character got up to uh, level 71. So what it shows to me is that at least under level 100, uh, hours spent and XP are basically meaningless once you create a setup like this because you can just craft incredible amounts of XP fast. I mean, we're talking in minutes. And I know there's been lots of YouTubers who have created really great content showing how they can do so many thousands of XP per minute. Um, I'm, you know, I'm not in that league. That's not what I'm trying to do here. I tried to make this a little more uh, playable and uh, it's just another way to gain XP and it ultimately credits if you want to sell what you create uh, as opposed to say going to Schrodinger 3 and shooting a bunch of swarming fox bats, which is what I had done on my original Xbox uh, playthrough. So let's go ahead and get, get started. So the first thing we're going to do is in order to fill all of the containers that I have uh, gathering different uh, inputs for this. We're gonna go to Venus. This is just the fastest way to fill everything. And I'm gonna show you uh, basically how I would do one of these, one of these uh, processes to get the maximum amount of, of XP. So we're gonna go to Venus and I've landed there before for all my experimentation. Actually, you could land anywhere. You know what, let's just land there. It doesn't even matter. What we're going to do is take advantage of the fact that Venus has a 1 UT hour to 100 local hour ratio. So if I sleep for 24 local hours, it's the equivalent of sleeping for 2400 hours. And uh, because of the way I've constructed my storage, that will fill everything up. Uh, whether the storage is partially empty or whether it is completely empty. And I'm just going to simulate a situation where everything is completely empty. Alright, so there's my ship. We're going to go into the ship. Get out of third person. Back into first person. Marika is with me today. This is uh, Blue Wolf. Glad to be part of the team. Thank you, Astrodynamic Specialist. I'm going to sleep for 24 hours. Now, there is something new about this particular run that I'm doing. Previously, I was trying to do it as basic as possible. So initially, I was using the Frontier. And then I switched to using a modified Wanderwell, which is the ship that you get from your parents in the game if you choose the kid stuff trait. And I didn't have enough storage in either one of those ships, so I was doing the trick where you gather items on yourself, and then you just drop them on the floor of the ship, and then you fly with them. It's sort of a 
a way to take advantage of the way Starfield tracks storage. Uh, this ship, however, I've tried to outfit it with the proper amount of storage to carry the inputs that I need. And I hope I calculated it right. Um, if, it, if I didn't, we could take advantage of the fact that you could just drop stuff on the floor. But hopefully this will be as simulating uh, having the proper amount of storage. Okay, and as you can see, I do have that kid stuff trait and 500 credits were taken out of my bank account and sent to my parents. Now we will go to one of two outposts that I had to create to get the inputs for the O2 shot farm. Uh, sedative and chlorine are two of the inputs for snake oil. And so to get those, I set up a outpost on Freya 2C, I believe. Actually on uh, Freya 3, it's on Vega 2C that I have the other, the other site. So I have a Freya 3 chlorine sedative outpost. So we're gonna go there and I'll show you what that site looks like. I had come to believe that Freya 3 was the only place in the Starfield universe where you could create a sedative in a greenhouse. But I've since come to learn that there's probably another planet uh, I don't have the details with me right now, but I will take a look at that and I'll probably talk about it when I go back to the Xbox side and show how I'm uh, building that character and building all this from scratch. But the purpose of the video today is just to show you what this out outpost uh, setup looks like right now. So here we are at Freya 3. And what's cool is that you can see the storage is filling as we watch. Do you see that? So when you beam into the planet, you know, you fast travel there. It doesn't rec uh, list the storage as being full, but it it the game knows that I've spent so much time on Venus that the storage is now full. And let's just go into the. Actually, I'm going to jump up here because there's some nasty critters on this on this planet. And if I get up on the uh, um, get up on my storage, that'll keep me away from some of them. You know, it's really dark. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go over here to my my Habs, and I'm going to sleep for a bit, and hopefully we can get some daylight so you can see what I've got here a little, a little clearer. I wish there was a way to just, when you visit an outpost, just to spawn inside your Habs, because I, I spend my time running up and doing this anyway. All right, so I'm going to see what the local time is. It's 3.58 uh, a.m. So I'll sleep for uh, three local hours. You can see the uh, the ratio is not working in our favor here. Three local hours is actually less hours, or there are less UT hours to that. So this is not a good place to, to actually farm other things. But because it's one of the, apparently one of the two places in the universe where you can get sedative, this is, the, this is it. Okay. Let's come over here, get up my launch or landing pad, and I will go into the uh, the builder mode actually, and I will show you what this looks like from a different point of view. Okay, so what I have here, oh, when I, oh okay, this is actually a little bit of a bug. When you see you've got that spinning circle, I can't actually build anything now. I would have to quick save and quick load to get out of it, but because I'm not building. It's fine, it doesn't really matter. So I'm just using this to show you the outpost. So we have uh, a landing pad with ship builder right here. This is just a convenience uh, function. We have some solar uh, wind turbine, or excuse me, we have some wind turbines to get power. Now this is where the magic happens. We have, uh, you know what? This is actually kind of a hassle. I'm gonna do a exit. I'm gonna do a quick save and quick load so that I can show you in modify mode what it is we're looking at. Otherwise, it's uh, it's kind of a pain. I have to actually remember everything perfectly. And it's been a while since I, I built this setup. By doing the quick save, quick load, it'll fix that spinning circle. And I'll be able to go into modify mode. And when I hover over uh, an item in the in the outpost, you'll be able to see what it actually is, which makes it easier for all of us. Like I said, when I started this process, 
Okay, and as you can see in the upper right, I've got both both outpost engineering and outpost management, thanks to the, the crew that I have assembled at this outpost. Okay, so now no spinning circle. So I'm gonna go into modify mode so that when I highlight it, it'll tell you what it is. So there's my ship builder, the landing pad with the ship builder. Here are my wind turbines. This is where the magic happens. I'm extracting chlorine. I only need two chlorine extractors. And these are going into gas storage over here. Um, my convention is I like to have the extractors going into a, a small storage unit. And then I use the large storage units to, uh, to collect all that material. And then I have the last item in the chain be a, again, another small storage, but I put it on top of everything else. And if you're wondering why it's not a giant um, stack, I will show you that in a second. The second key element are water extractors. And I have uh, one, two, and I believe three water extractors. Those are going into a single small liquid storage unit. That uh, liquid storage unit is feeding two greenhouses. And the two greenhouses are producing sedative. And sedative and chlorine are two of the ingredients that I need to make snake oil. The third one is metabolic agent. Metabolic agent cannot be farmed on this location. So I'm actually doing that in my second outpost. So what that means is I'm producing two of the inputs here and I need to get those inputs elsewhere. The outputs for the greenhouses are coming over here to this solid storage. Again, I use the convention small box for the input, large for the storage. Uh, because of the way the, the geography was here, I had to do a little bit of a gap and then I have the uh, small storage again is the last part of the chain. And I calculated all these, um, trying to use other people's estimates, and then I eventually had to do it myself because as I'll go, as I'll talk about in my other video later to come, uh, it's actually not as straightforward as you might think because of some weird quirks in the way the system works. But this is the basic setup. Argon extraction, water extraction, feeding a greenhouse. I had to uh, identify, scan fully uh, the, I believe it was the fire rose, uh, fauna, or excuse me, flora, in order to create the sedative. In fact, why don't we take a look at that? I'll be able to tell you firsthand. We'll run over to the greenhouse. Uh, those, this, like I said, there's some nasty, uh, nasty creatures on this, on this site. I hope I don't get into combat just trying to show you what's going on here, but you never know. So we'll come over here. We'll go into the greenhouse. Oh, the greenhouse is empty. This is a little bit scary. Let's go to the other one, see if there's anything in there. Actually, you know what? I should probably check and make sure everything is still working because if it's not working, then we have to repair it. Oh, great corrosive gas. Yeah, okay. So there's nothing in here either. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna run away, run away from the corrosive gases. I'm not sure what caused that. Everything five by five. All systems looking good, boss. Thank you. Security chief, strictly there for decoration. Not sure they really do a whole lot. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what the status is with the outpost. And yeah, actually, I think, I think it's working. Outposts are really cool, but I'll tell you what, sometimes they are not, they don't do what you expect them to do. See the integrity on this is good. Integrity on this is good. I think we're okay, even though the items were not in there. All right. My goal with this was to show you how I actually make these items. So let's let's do that next step. So what I'm going to do is show you how I get these items to my next outpost, where we'll do the crafting. I don't use cargo links. Cargo links do not work in sleep mode. You have to do everything in real time, which is totally a hassle and makes it essentially for me non-viable. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to manually run along all of these cargos and now you will know why I lined them up the way I did. So I'm going to just run and take and I'm going to become encumbered but it doesn't matter. And you'll see the numbers go by as far as what's in each one. And I'll, immediately I am starting to have problems but that's okay. I'm just going to jump to the last one here. Okay, and that's cool. You can watch the uh, the count go down to zero. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to transfer it to my ship. 
bring up the cargo. And this is a resource. So I will go here and I will store this resource. Resource. Each item is half a kilo. So I should have enough. I'm going to store all resources. There we go. And we will see. <laughs> I may have to carry some of this stuff on myself. We will we will see. I haven't act like I said, this is a little bit of an experiment. First time I'm doing this uh, with this particular cargo. Although if I had to, I could add some cargo. So I may, who knows? Hopefully I won't have to do that. Maybe I will. We'll see. So here I am sprinting back to the beginning because these are going down a gradient. Oh, come on, buddy. Okay. All right, so now we are going to collect our chlorine manually. All right, so there's all of our chlorine. Now I'm going to try to load this all onto my ship. I think it works. My mass went back down to zero. And if I look at my ship, 7382, hey, I did the math correctly. And if I take a look at my resources, I've got 6980 and 6980. So this will probably be the limit of what I'm able to create, 6980 because of the ratios of the items that I need. We'll talk about that in a moment when I when I get to where I need to go. All right, so I have what I need. I'm gonna do a, a save here, just because I don't wanna have to have done all this work and then screw something up. And now I'm gonna go to my second and last outpost where we will do some crafting. And I do crafting, I don't do automatic fabrication because it's the crafting that gives you the XP. If I were just care, if I just cared about money, I would do that. But uh, I actually want the XP. My outpost for creating the the next items is on Vega Two C, and that's because of a, a several factors. It has to do with the um, the items that were there as far as resource. Uh, I needed argon, and I needed a place that could produce metabolic agent and toxin. And thanks to the flora that is on this planet, as well as the fact that it has, I believe, either at or roughly about five hours local uh, or five hours UT to every one hour local. It makes it a great place if you need to rest um, to, say, get 48 UT hours to reset a vendor. And you might have saw in my previous video where I talked about the uh, my favorite mods, the richer vendor mod. Oh, okay, by the way, let's watch these fill up. Same same trick as when we were uh, we came from Venus, and they fill up while you're watching. So this is, it's actually really cool to think like all of these are now full. And in my other video, I will go through exactly how many of each I have. Um, basically, I had to figure it all out in order to get the most bang for the buck without without wasting resources. So let's do a quick look at what is on this outpost. And I think everything is looking okay. All right. So once again, we have our landing pad with shipbuilder. We have solar. Oh, excuse me. I keep saying solar. We have wind power. I try to use wind where possible. Then we have argon extractors. And I think I have four at this location. One, two, three. We have four argon extractors. Then I have water extractors. And the water extractors, or the argon extractors are going into uh, these gas storage containers here. And I've stacked these because I don't need to run along them manually. When I do crafting, the crafting uh, workstation knows that the materials are there. The uh, water is being fed to these sets of greenhouses and I have greenhouses producing metabolic agents and toxin. I only have two uh, toxin the rest are producing metabolic agent. And that is because the ratio of metabolic agent that I need to everything else is the highest. Um, basically, I need four metabolic agents um, in ratio to other things. Uh, I think it's four metabolic agent, two argon, uh, one sedative, 
one toxin, I think is the ratio. I've got it written down here somewhere. Uh, here it is. I've got in order, uh, what I get from Freya 3 is one chlorine, one sedative. And then on Vega 2C, I actually need one toxin, two argon, and five metabolic agents. So it's uh, five to the one of the others and then to the two of the argon. Okay. I started out with four <laughs> and I realized I had a shortfall somewhere and my math was off. So I increased it to five and that turned out to be what I needed. Okay, so now, like I said, we don't have to manually grab anything. We can simply go straight to crafting. And hopefully while I'm crafting, we don't get any visits on that location over there. Yes, that is an adversary uh, outpost. Uh, sometimes you can actually see people over there. If that's the case, then I need to go take them down. Uh, other times I've had ships land over there. And of course that's fun. You know, I like to deal that side of the game as well, but that's not what I'm here to do. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come over here to our pharmaceutical lab and I need to craft snake oil. Snake oil plus O2 shot plus two metabolic agent will give you, excuse me, snake oil plus two metabolic agent plus amp will give you the O2 shot. Now, I'm playing on PC and so it looks like Xbox because I'm using a controller right now. But in order to do this, I end up switching over to uh, keyboard. So that's what I'll be doing. And I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to make the snake oil. The snake oil is going to be the limiting factor here because of the chlorine. I took the chlorine from the other outpost. So as soon as the chlorine is done, that's like the limiting factor for everything else that I can make because everything else should be in, in abundance um, as far as, as what I need. Well, the chlorine um, and the sedative. Uh, I, I can't remember which one of those. One of them was just a little bit less than the other site uh, or the other, than the other resource, but you'll see what I mean. Okay, so to craft it, I'm going to, on keyboard, I'm here, I'm going to be hitting E, and then I'm going to be getting my mouse off to the right to try to click either 98 or 99, and then I'll, I will hit E again. And that just made a batch of uh, snake oil. So I'm going to do that again. Try to line that up. There we go. Now, if I do this right, if I, if I line everything up where it needs to be, I can just start clicking. Ah. The snake oil one can be a little bit tricky because of where it is on the menu, but I have gotten a hang of this. Just doing it live. Maybe I'm a little nervous here. So I had a little bit of a good rhythm going there. And as you can tell, I just gained a level while doing all this. Uh, see, it's that... Uh, it's having to reposition that. If anyone knows any tricks for that, I'm sure I should just watch someone else's video and see how they did it.
Okay. There we go. I have now run out of sedative, and I have two chlorine left. So I have produced all of the snake oil that I can produce. And if I exit this and take a look at what I'm carrying. I now have 6980 snake oil. So I'm just going to make a little note of that. 6980 snake oil. OK. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to craft amp. And when I craft amp, amp is made out of two argon, one toxin, and one sedative. And I, I have, um, in this case, the argon and the, actually all three of those will be the limiting factor. So whatever runs out first, that will tell me how many amps I'll be able to create. Um, I'll have metabolic agent left over to combine with the amp and the snake oil to make the O2 shot. So this is what I'm going to do now, is I'm going to start creating, uh, start creating amp. So go back into using the uh, mouse and keyboard. Actually, before I do that, let me just check my character's uh, sleep status because I want to make sure I have my uh, well-rested buff. I do have it for just under nine more minutes. So let's, uh, let's, you know what? Let's sleep quickly here to make sure that I continue to have that. Okay. Plus it's a little brighter. I love the, the lighting in this particular part of the game. Okay. So here we are, we're going to start crafting amp. All right, so line up. Mouse moved a little bit there. Okay, just ran out. So here, uh, argon ran out first. I have a little bit of toxin left over and I got plenty of metabolic agent. So if we come out and take a look at what I'm carrying, and I leveled up to 73 while that was all happening. Uh, we now have 6969 amp. So we had 6980 of the snake oil and now we have 6969 amp. Okay, so now we know that we'll be able to make no more than 6969 O2 shots. All right, and now for the final part, this is where we make the O2 shots. Hello, Captain. Hello, random NPC who I signed here. Okay, back to mouse keyboard. Line it up. All is well, Captain, all things considered. Thank you, thank you. Okay, this one's a little bit like the other one. If I have to get it in the middle of the screen, that helps. There we go. 
Everything's five by five, Captain. Hi, Captain. Good to see you. Ah. Captain on deck. Captain on deck. That is right, my friend. Of course, the captain is having a little bit of trouble here with his keyboard and mouse. I wish there was a way to just put this where I need it, but it doesn't quite work that way, but that's okay. Always a pleasure, Captain. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. All things considered. That's right, my friend. Oh. Are we done? We're done. Alright, and in this process we leveled up from level 61, or excuse me, 71 up to 77. Now let's see. Uh, as you can tell, let's see what we five by five, Captain. let's see what we ran out of first. I didn't uh, pay attention there. It looks like we ran out of amp, so amp was the limiting factor. We only had eleven more snake oils, and we had a decent amount of metabolic agent left. I can't tell because of the way that the uh, the system works, unfortunately. But if I take a look in my inventory, I have no amp left. I used it all up. I have eleven snake oils. And I have uh, 1,938 O2 shots. Now, that is actually double what I expected. Let me see here. 13938 O2 shots. So I can't actually remember if I was carrying that or did I really produce that many? Um, because I should have only been limited by the inputs that I had, namely the 6969 amp, the 6980 snake oil, uh, the lower of those two numbers should have limited what I could produce. So, you know, I don't know. I'll have to go back and maybe look at the load and see exactly what I was, what, like, was I already carrying this? I don't think I was because that would have been 139 kilos of stuff already. Um, but whatever this, whatever the situation is, I have all of that O2 shot now. And so the question is, well, you know, I gained. Good my station, Captain. Thank you. I gained the XP necessary to go from uh, levels 71 up to 77. And if I were to come over here to uh, my pawn shop, I could sell some of this stuff. So I'll get rid of the stuff I don't need first of all. We'll sell the. Uh, I'll sell the. I'll sell the snake oil. Don't need that. Um, but now these O2 shots. The O2 shots that I'm carrying are worth a little bit less than a million credits. That's 975,660 credits in addition to all of the XP that I gained. And just to do sort of some quick, you know, quick math on that, um, we're at the stage now where we're needing, you know, upwards of 7,000 XP per level. There's a great chart that I'll link to in the, the description of this video where you can see the XP that you need for each level. And uh, that the idea that I would make um, somewhere, you know, about 7,000 between, you know, 6,900, 7,000 um, doses of O2 shot. Uh, and I would get 
um, on the order of about 5,000 XP um, per 1,000 dose. That would get me to about the 35,000 XP amount, which would be roughly right for what my sense is to go from level 71 to 77. So just doing some, you know, envelope in the air in, the, in my head map. That's what I think. So I'm a little suspicious about that I had this double dose of O2 shot. Uh, like, I, like I said, maybe I had already done this and uh, just didn't notice it. It's entirely possible because this character is the one that I've been doing all this O2 shot testing and carrying around half a million worth of O2 shot, uh, even you know, even using the Galactic Pawn Shop, which I'll show you how that works. I'll, I'll just go ahead and sell what I have. So we'll bump this down to using the left bumper. We'll get this down. Oh, oops, hold on, hold on. We'll get this down to 199 and we'll sell it. Um, and then I'll show you what I would do and, and why it's a good idea to be building on this particular planet because you can take advantage of the roughly five to one time ratio in order to reset this vendor faster than you would someplace else, especially faster than you would on uh, Freya 3, which actually the time ratio works against you at that location. All right, we're rolling in. And there we are. We'll sell that. Come over here. Oh, who is sleeping in my bed? Outpost management specialist. This is why I built you beds over here. That's okay. All right. Now over here, I'm going to sleep for 11 local hours or 50... Uh, UT hours and hopefully there nothing will happen uh, while I'm sleeping the way I can tell some sometimes that things are breaking in the background or potentially something's going on is when it stalls like I'll sleep for a certain amount of time and suddenly it's it's like not advancing that's kind of scary something's happening with the game engine that that worries me a little bit but so far so good seems to be going along smoothly All right. Glad to be a part of the team. Thank you, Outpost Security Chief. Okay, now I'll go back over to my kiosk. And I will sell some more O2 shots. And I, I understand that some of you think that this is cheating to use, you know, a mod like this that gives you more uh, credits. I just see it as quality of life because if I wanted to sell this stuff, even if I wanted to sell 20,000, never mind, you know, 200,000 or, or whatever, I'd have to take a trip to Neon and run around. And you can actually sell O2 shots pretty easily. Lots of people buy them. But, um, you know, come on, just give us just give us more money, Beth Bethesda, right? So I just went over the 5 million credit mark right there. Uh, my mass is still high, so I'd want to keep selling these things. And oh, by the way, we could take a look outside and you can see that the storage is filling up again because as I'm sleeping, things are being extracted and that's how it works. All right. So that's how my O2 shot farm works. I gather resources on Freya 3. Um, I get sedative and chlorine. I transport it by hand myself to my outpost on Vega 2C where I'm getting metabolic agent and toxin and argon. I combine uh, several of those ingredients to make amp and snake oil. I then combine those two plus more met metabolic agent to make O2 shots. And as you can see, each one of those uh, crafting processes provides you with XP. The ultimate goal though is to ultimately uh, make the O2 shot, which gives you uh, XP. So, you know, I, I've done some math to figure out exactly how much it is, and I'll include that probably when I when I do my my build, of, you know, showing how to actually create this thing. So we'll sell some more here. Oh, there we go. It's pretty nice. You can get within 10, 10 credits of selling <laughs> using uh, two hundred k. And I think when I set up that kiosk when I first installed the mod. It gave you different options like double credit, five times credit, 10 times credit, 50 times credit. I think I chose the 10 times. So that kiosk would normally have 20,000 credits. Uh, by virtue of setting it at 10 times, I get 200K, which I think is, is a pretty good number. If I were to do it again, I probably would just do 50. I mean, it really doesn't make any difference because I don't care about the money at this point. I just don't like to carry all this O2 shot. 
Of course, I could just drop it on the floor in the kiosk, or excuse me, in the uh, in another hab there. Um, now notice the game is slowing. Oh, <laughs> it stalled for me at nine local hours. So I'm a little bit worried that something is happening in the background, like uh, agents landed and, and attacked the outpost or something weird is happening where there are more floating rocks in the background. Uh, whenever I see a stall like this, it's usually a sign that something odd is happening with the game and I have to track it down. Of course, if it's a rock hanging in the air, I can't do anything about that. I haven't really seen any negative effects of that. So thankfully that's just sort of a glitch that doesn't make a difference to the game. Um, if, however, my outpost has been attacked and my troops weren't able to repulse it, then I'll have to go and fix some things, which I wish the interface were a little better there. Um, typically what I do is I check to see if my power usage has changed because currently I think I'm using pretty much all of the available power. If suddenly I'm not using as much power, that tells me that items that use power, like extractors, greenhouses, uh, they have been damaged and I need to repair them manually. And that's just a case of finding the item that's damaged. Uh, sometimes you'll be able to tell that it has a red outline around it, um, but generally I just hover over everything. And if it says that it's damaged uh, or it gives me essentially the right button to click to repair, I'll just click it and it goes back to working. Uh, outposts can be very finicky and I really only use them for fun like this, just to just to have a way to see if it could be done, you know, to see how I see people creating you know, these outposts, creating XP and all that. And I wanted to see if I could do it. So that was the purpose of uh, creating this outfit and, uh, you know, ultimately this video to show you what's out there. So let's just do a quick check to see if anything Well, actually, we don't need to do that. We need to press this button. And yeah, I'm using 138 of 138 power. So apparently nothing was broken while I was away, which is good. Okay, that is all for this video. Uh, you know, the goal today, and actually where's Marika? She's usually chilling with the rest of the crew here. So I think I will use this as an opportunity to demonstrate uh, one of the mods that I really like, and that is follower control. And I'm going to go to all followers. And I'm going to say, teleport to me. And if I look around, oh my goodness. <laughs> Personal space. So there's my two followers. Vasco and Marika just teleported in. Captain on deck. Captain on deck. That's right. Outpost management specialist. Hello, and Captain. outpost security chief. Mm. And Vasco. Oh, who who is outpost engineering specialist is bored but you know what they're all working hard they're getting the job done marika's walking over here staring at a wall marika what's going on why are you staring at the wall uh oh marika sounds like she's underwater so that must be a little bit of a a, a little bit of a glitch that i have to quick save quick load to fix i'll be seeing you all right well that's it for for today's video i hope you enjoyed it my name is richard uh, please like and subscribe. Please let me know in the comments if you like the video, if you'd like to see other content. I have some other plans uh, in store. And remember on my Xbox side, uh, again to the same playlist, I will be uh, documenting... Boy, Marika's really freaking me out standing in the dark over there. I'm documenting how to Ready go from action, a Captain. level 0, level 1 character all the way to uh, level 12, which is what I think you need to build all this stuff. You could actually do it earlier. But level 12 is what you need. Oof, that is scary. Level 12 is what you need in order to use or to build the uh, large storage. It's not strictly level 12. It's the, uh, sub it's the skills, the, pr the predecessor skills and skill points that you need. So that's all for today. And I will see you in the Starfield.